Okay, just cut the talk through the Eggbot electronics. Now, quick guide through. This is the instructions are on the page, but uh, I thought I'd just talk through them anyway, um, so we can just go through a few notes and whatnot. So here are the components. Um, I'll start with the battery. We're using an 11.1 volt LiPo battery. It charges up to well over 12 volts when uh, when they're fully charged. 11.1 is where it pretty much gets down to its lower charge. Um, we are using a six channel fly sky receiver you don't need any more than six channels um there's a slip ring you just get the smallest and cheapest from ebay i think that one there is about two amp across all the cables uh, but it's not you're not drawing any power really for, just for the lights we've got a mini one amp bi-directional um, um speed controller you can see there that there's no extra battery power. These things are tiny and uh, they're just ideal for running the little yellow plastic motors that we use for the dome on them. So, um, and it takes the power directly off the uh, the receiver. Then we've got a couple of NeoPixel singles, which are those little uh, single LEDs, uh, single um, NeoPixels, an Arduino Nano, uh, which controls the lights. We have a power switch which is the um just to switch it on and off which you can you can wire in uh nine leds and nine resistors which i'll go through what those are for and then a five amp dual bi-directional speed controller um it doesn't have to be five amp but if you look at that one that's this is the cheapest and best one that i've found they seem to be available everywhere ebay and amazon, amazon and whatnot but I have a little uh, look around for this one it's quite a neat one. It work. It does. They work really well. But effectively, you can use any speed controller. Uh, but make sure that your speed controller can do up to 3s. It's got to do 3s. You'll see that, which is this. this which is this 11.1 volts, and it's 5 amps because the motors do actually stall at 5.6 amps or something like that. So you want at least a 5 amp controller, really, as a minimum. It's got a battery connector in important you get the polarity the right way around on there and then these are two cables for your motor then you've got one of this which is one of your signals it says to channel two and that is channel one if, if you if you, you can swap these around to try when you when you eventually get to fault finding see what they're what they're like but effectively channel one and channel two so let's talk about power circuits really check and understand what a lipo is have a look at them they are superb batteries use them all the time but there is a risk with them you have to be careful you have to look after these um, make sure it doesn't run too low there's these little lipo voltage monitors which you can see there in that picture they're ideal because they just keep an eye on the lipo and if it gets too low it emits a bit of a buzzing noise and then you gives you a, an indicator you need to change it um, i put a switch on there just to turn it on and off it's soldered in into the the main uh, positive cable so we switch it off and on really that's all it is or alternatively you can just unplug the battery it's entirely depending on how lazy you feel the power then goes to the speed control and the battery cable and then that powers the speed controller up which also gives us a five volts and that that goes then there's a three pin connector which goes to channel two and a single pin connector to channel one on the signal cables they are the ones nearest the label so you want the the brown to be at the bottom the reds are always in the middle and then your signal cables at the top so that single one that you've got there the single cable make sure that's up at the top okay don't plug it anywhere else in particular don't plug it in the middle because that ain't going to do it any good whatsoever um that supplies five volts to the receiver and we're actually going to use that same five volts that goes to that receiver to power all the lights and stuff because it, it and the dome motor because it isn't drawing a lot of current at all if it did do, then you might want to put an extra um, UBEC, which is kind of give, give an extra five volts. But in this in this one, we're going to keep it really simple. And then obviously the two connectors go to each of the battery. A little bit talking around the dome control. So the dome, it, we use these little yellow plastic motors, um, which you can see there, and this little mini SP. And it is really simple. All you do is put the speed controller, you plug it into channel four, which is the left to right stick i think on the left hand side um and then you take the two cables and you just why well, it sold them to the battery and effectively then you've got you've got dome control it takes the power off there for the motor and also the rc so it's a single connector and that's your dome control in place let's talk lights the lights are a little bit more complex again we're running a 
um, servo style connector. I mean, you can use an old servo and just cut the cable off if you want to. But what you do is you take the black and the brown, or the black and the red, not the signal, which is that yellowy orangey colour, but the black and the red. Um, and that's your 5 volts in your ground. We're running it through a slip ring. All a slip ring is it allows you to put a continuous current or a continuous signal through and spin it round as many times as you want, like you would do on a dome. And it's fitted into the dome. So literally 5 volts and 0 go in and 5 volts and the ground go out. Okay. The ground then goes to these LEDs. These are 3 mil um, LEDs. Uh, with a 68 ohm resistor on each of the positive legs. So again, familiarise yourself with LED ones. I, I sort of hot glued them in and then soldered the um, LEDs in and then soldered them all together. So it's quite a neat, neat little job that just had two cables that come out of it. You can you can put the, all the grounds once you've connected the grounds on the LED bank. You can connect together and connect to the main ground. And then on the LEDs, rather than connecting them to the power, which means they'd be on all the time, you can connect them to D9, D10, and then D11. And what the sketch does is it sort of turns them on and off at random intervals. So you get a little bit of a cool sort of flashing uh, on the three um, LED banks. The ground of the 5 volts goes then to power both the Arduino and also these two um, NeoPixels. I think the images on these are actually wrong because on the ones that I've used they've just got a single light rather than these seven. Um, so if you if you look at the NeoPixel singles that's what you want. Um, just be aware that I think I, I probably used the wrong image in there but with the, uh, the, the wiring diagram is correct. So your 5 volts and your ground powers these um, you, again, you can make a cable up where you've got little spurs coming off for these if it's easier. So 5 volts and ground go to your Arduino, which should light up. And then your 5 volts and ground also go to these two sets. And then the only other connection you've got is your data, which these are these are intelligent, so you can switch colours and all of that kind of stuff as you've seen the flashing lights that's on the egg bot. So what you've got is D6 on the Arduino, you take D6, and you put it to D in on the first NeoPixel, and then D8 on the first NeoPixel, D out, sorry, on the first NeoPixel goes to D in on the second NeoPixel. Okay, so you can basically connect these NeoPixels in series, and the code can then say address one, address two, address three, so you can turn them on independently. Have a look at the code; it's fairly easy to understand when you when you go through that. And what that actually then does is literally. As long as you've got power going through and I hot glued the um, uh, the Arduino into the inside and just tidied the cables but once you've got power going in what will happen is the code will start you'll have the flashing uh, look, look like PSI lights on the uh, on the dome which will flash green and yellow and uh, red and blue and then these D9, D10 and D11 will all switch on sort of randomly give you a little bit of a chattery flashing light which overall is your lights and that is pretty much it for the electronics for the for the egg bot fairly simple um so fault finding wise there's not a lot in it really i mean obviously if you can't get these uh things working then check make sure you've got all the connectors right um if you can't get the leds flashing make sure you've got the orientation right for the leds leds only go one way there's there's only one leg that's positive and one leg that's negative you can't swap them around it's not like a bulb so again uh redo a little bit of research a little bit of reading up on leds and how you connect the uh um the the resistors you can check these banks independently just with a five volt battery to see if you do actually get the lights on if you wanted to test it before you actually install it in your robots so a few things that you can do to test but as long as you get it broadly sat like this it's okay the dome motor is really simple it's just running in one esc that's powered straight off that connector and actually the power circuit is fairly simple so really it's a really simple diagram a good one to start with and hopefully that was useful uh, I'll, uh, I'll keep adding these to make them a little bit easier for you guys.